Jesus says, I will clothe you in my humility and you will have enough oil. December 26, 2015 Words from Jesus through Sister Claire Spoken by Jackie Jesus began To all my blessed ones I know this time of waiting is difficult for you all Limbo is never pleasant But allow me to fill you with my love each day And walk about looking for opportunities To pour it out on others in this way, you will not get bored or anxious, but rather stay fresh, alert, and above all else, keep oil in your lamps. I know some of you are chuffing at the bit to get at the news. Please drown that desire and stay tuned to me. The news will do nothing but confuse you. Stay tuned into me, keep me company, and walk about doing good. In that way, nothing shall catch you by surprise, and you will have more than enough oil in your lamp at that fateful hour. Examine your hearts, your conscience and behavior, but don't become obsessed with it. Rather take a glance where you see evil, repent and ask for the grace to overcome yourself. I tell you the truth, the only real enemy you have is yourself. Conquer yourself and the other enemies on the outside will gain no foothold. Though unpleasant things may happen to you, your charitable response will shut the door in their face as they look to start a root of bitterness or resentment. Above all, maintain the sweetness of your soul and the enemy on the outside will find you so frustrating to work with. Things just won't go their way and you will cause them constant confusion and frustration. As you look around you at those who do not know what is about to happen, do not allow pride to enter in. Do not look down on anyone. Rather, if that thought enters your mind, immediately crush it by recounting all the virtue that person has that you don't have. And if you have a difficult time assigning virtue to them, imagine if you were brought up in a heavy drug and violence environment, where your mother was prostituting herself for drugs, and where different men abused and hated you, where you were poor and never had decent food to eat or warm clothing. Imagine 15 years of that and what sort of person you would be now. Each soul I bring into the world has graces that accompany them. Some who are born into holy ministering families came with 60 graces. Others who were born to prostitutes and drug addicts came into this world with only six graces. It is not what I gave you to begin with, but what you did with them that counts. How does that translate? That woman you know who is manipulative and sneaky is that way for a reason. She began life with inadequate means and to survive she had to be sneaky. Some would be full-blown criminals, robbing, raping and destroying everything they could get their hands on. That she is just a little sneaky well, that's nothing compared to what the demons wanted her to become and how they tempted and taunted her. But she used those six graces. She made the decision to be mostly honest and good to others. Whereas another, raised in a well-provided-for household with a university education, might be self-centered, proud and harbor resentment, towards the poor and have failed to use the 30 graces they were given, because without love you have nothing. There must be a reason you would give one more graces than another. That for now must remain a mystery, but it will be revealed to you one day. Suffice it to say, I'm a just God, 
and that everything in heaven is ordered by perfection. You can always find ways to elevate others above yourself. Though I was in the form of God, I did not consider equality with God something to be grasped at. I did not come into this world born of nobility in royal surroundings. I preferred the poor, the simple and humble to be my parents and companions. The only well-educated apostle was the one who betrayed me. That should tell you something. The Pharisees missed me because they too were looking for nobility, worldly power and means. In this way, I was readily recognized by the poor, the sincere and the humble. But there was nothing in me to appeal to nobility and class. Rather to them, I was merely a carpenter from Nazareth. And after all, can any good thing come from Nazareth? So you see, I preferred humility, anonymity and to be of no account to the world. And I'm perfecting my bride in these traits, because they safeguard the soul and make her a worthy companion for me. And in the end, you will be more loved for your littleness than your greatness. Yes, I want my brides, my blessed ones, to go around, elevating others above themselves, in their thoughts and actions, not verbally. I want them to take the last place, to be the lowest and to seek the interest of others rather than their own. Tall order? For some, yes. Lacking in grace? No. I'm providing it as these words are received into your hearts. As you say, be done to me according to your will. This grace is being given and taking root within your heart. As you apply this practice, you will find that you have many judgments against others, rich, poor, lame, all. It will be a challenge for you, and a good one at that. All your thoughts will be revealed in heaven. Purify your heart now, and it will not be such a shock to you. These are finishing touches, my dear ones. They will make you shine like the stars in the firmament. Go now and put your hearts into it. I'm with you. Let this new grace, this new blessing take root deep in your hearts and bear sweet, sweet fruit.